it's hard to get people to try plan B when plan A is working. Isn't that the truth? So often in our congregations, we get stuck in a single way of doing things and change comes hard. We hear things like, but we've always done it this way and new ideas sometimes don't survive the skepticism. But isn't it also the truth that everything that is going on in the world right now makes it feel like we are making up everything as we go along. We might be on plan C or D or Q or even Z by now. The pandemic, the wildfires, the smoke, the heat, and all the other things that are happening to us and around us. Well, I know that for me, all the plans I've made and changed and made again are starting to feel useless. It's exhausting and hard, and I know I'm not the only one feeling it. Even creativity feels like it's a lot to be asking. We've been creative. We've learned to make and edit videos, to live stream, to Zoom, to keep a safe distance between our grocery carts, to take our reading groups, date nights, family visits, even weddings and memorial services online. At CLF, you've had a bit more practice, but it's still been an adjustment in many parts of our lives. Some of us have spent more time with our kids than feels healthy, and others are longing to spend time with people we love, our grandkids, our friends, our family. We have had to be innovative and creative, and a lot of good has come from it. And it's okay to notice that it's also hard. Not just hard, but as a lot of professionals are saying, a form of trauma. The balance is off, and we're often dealing with multiple crises all at once. We get our hopes up that something can go back to normal, and then find we have to hang on a little while longer. I guess that's why I've been thinking a lot about how we can be creative without feeling like we are using up energy, instead helping generate it. There's been an idea, a meme, going around the internet that tells us that we don't have to have motivation or energy to start something. We often get that energy and motivation by doing the thing. I think that applies equally to creativity especially in trying times. We may put off creativity by saying we don't have time or energy or aren't feeling it because we're so exhausted by our lives. And yet, taking the time to do something creative, painting, writing, singing, doodling, rearranging the furniture, cooking, or just having a spontaneous day where you do something different is a way to recharge to access or generate the power of inspiration, beauty, and creativity. Maybe you, like me, sometimes get stuck because you think too big. That's where loving the limits comes in. I know that when possibilities are endless, I'm more anxious than excited. Looking at a giant empty canvas or a completely blank page or thinking I have to perfect a song or a poem or make a five course dinner or accomplish something truly grand does not help me start. Instead, it may make me just wanna take a nap. But when I think small, limiting the overwhelm, I start to get curious. Can I paint this? with only these three colors? Can I write a short, short story? Can I pretend I'm on Chopped and use just these three ingredients I already have in my kitchen? Adrienne Marie Brown wrote in her transforming book, Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good. Your no makes the way for your yes. Boundaries create the container within which your yes is authentic. Being able to say no makes yes a choice. And choreographer and dancer Twyla Tharp has a whole chapter in her book, The Creative Habit, Learn It and Use It for Life, called Before You Can Think Outside the Box, 
you have to have a box. Boundaries, limits, yes, even the box, can help us define a space within which we feel we can be creative. Maybe it will help us to think like a gardener and look for spaces in our lives that have the right elements to grow our creativity. Do we have an acre with fine sun, water, and soil? Or will tending and weeding and watering an acre exhaust us? Maybe we have one raised bed over here in this sunny spot where we only plant our favorite things. Maybe zinnias and tomatoes and sunflowers. Or if our environment feels damp and shadowed, maybe it's a place to grow mushrooms or to compost things to create more dark, fertile soil. American culture, and even Unitarian Universalist culture with echoes of the old slogan, onward and upward forever, sometimes makes us feel that small efforts are not enough. We think, why try? if we can only feed ourselves and not the whole world. Or worse, we sometimes feel that creativity is indulgent and only for those with time for leisure. I'm here to say that it isn't so. If we are to find ways to respond to the world that seems to be falling apart around us, to heal and repair and build the world we dream about, we have to imagine it. We have to have practices that help us picture what we are hoping to build and then figure out what we need to get from here to there. Or maybe changing the world is too big a project. Maybe we can just imagine making sure people have a reliable meal on Thursdays or a place to wash their hands or someone to talk to who reminds them that they are a person with inherent worth and dignity. Maybe we have to imagine the one small corner where we can build a lovely raised bed and let even the small seeds grow and take root. Unitarian Universalists are planners, sometimes to our detriment. We write 40 page strategic plans and wordsmith each sentence until we've squeezed the juice out of it. And too often the plans are used to critique every effort, dismiss creative experiments, and micromanage and supervise the efforts of others instead of getting involved ourselves. Again, the words of change leader Adrian Marie Brown, this time from her book Emergent Strategy, Shaping Change, Changing Worlds. In movement work, she says, I have been facilitating groups to shift from a culture of strategic planning to one of strategic intentions. What are our intentions informed by our vision? What do we need to be and do to bring our vision to pass? How do we bring those intentions to life throughout every change in every aspect of our work? In my congregation in Ashland, Oregon, we've started to imagine strategic intentions. We bring those intentions to life through learning goals, not ends that we expect others to meet, but things the congregation agrees to learn and learn how to put into action. One of our goals has been to learn to recognize and remove barriers that get in the way of our welcome and our embodiment of our deep commitment to our first and seventh and now eighth principle. We have two anti-racism study and learning groups and we'll add a third one this fall. Well over a third of our active members are supporting each other in this learning. That may not sound creative to you. It may even sound dull or pedantic. It's not. We've learned that learning isn't just about the intellect. Yes, we read books, but we also immerse ourselves in art and music and bear witness to the deep joy and pain of those who suffer under white supremacy culture and its handmaidens, ableism, transphobia, misogyny, homophobia, and all the other efforts to make some people superior and dehumanize others. And we practice real life skills by playing, using improv to help us learn to interrupt 
how to act even when we're uncomfortable or embarrassed. These classes are powerful and they're fun. They generate joy and help us integrate what we're learning into not just our ideas, but our actions, our habits, and our bodies. Most of the time, it feels like a dance. The limits and boundaries make it possible to share the floor, to tell if it's an adagio or a foxtrot, to learn not to step on each other's feet. And that liberates creativity and teamwork built on real relationships with each other that have been formed by trusting our partners to know how to lead and to follow, to improvise when necessary, and to engage creatively in small ways that have a way of growing when held in the embrace of covenant and love. This is what rebuilds our hope and keeps us moving even though the dance we thought we would be dancing by now has been interrupted and changed. We're reminded that life is an art and it calls us to be creative even if only in small increments. It's how I'm able to keep going, to keep my promise to give up on giving up. And it's how all of us will make it through the tough times together. May it be so. May we be the ones that make it so. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be.